Hey everybody, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Thanks for hitting the likes. Let me know you want to update, and I do have updated information for you. Matter of fact, you can see that this, this is pretty much the quiet before the storm. You have the storms in the southeast. These are flaring up amongst Alabama, Georgia, going towards South Carolina. And this is right before the blow up later tonight into tomorrow when this comes all to the southeast. So we do have the storms going on in the southeast, many tornadoes already. And we do have the bands and the storms coming across the Midwest, all the way into the Ohio Valley for tonight, as well as the storms going to the northeast. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. Uh, I do upload every single day, except Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. Uh, this was actually an update, because as you can see, it is needed. You have the storms in the south and the southeast. You have the storms in the northeast and Midwest. And this is pretty much the quiet before the storm. It is about to blow up. So hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you in my community. God bless you and your family. Now the two videos I have for y'all tonight on the very top is your PWAT. That's your precipital water. You can see all the moisture coming into the United States. Especially the dark red is very heavy precipitation. As it comes into these storms getting ready for tonight tomorrow all the way to Wednesday going off into the coast. And the one right above my head is your dew points. The dew points is showing you all the moisture that's coming into the atmosphere and all of that orange you see is all 70s. And it's gonna stay that way all the way until Wednesday. So let me get what I got for you. If you enjoy the update, hit that like. I do appreciate you for it. So far, the storms are booming. I have these links in all my videos. If you just go to poweroutage.us, you can see exactly what's going on with the power outages. And so far, we have 20,000 in Florida, 16,000 in Georgia, 13,000 in Texas, 5,000 in Wisconsin, 5,000 in South Carolina. Matter of fact, we also got 5,000 in California. They just had 10 plus. So they're getting the power back as quick as they are, are losing it. But one thing I've noticed, like say you go to PowerOutage.us, you click on your state, it will show you what counties is out. And if you look at Florida, almost all their power outages is one county. But you can see who's working on it, and every 10 minutes it does update. So if your county next to you has power, more than likely you'll be next. Now we have had a lot of tornadoes on Sunday, but ever since 9 o'clock this morning now, we've had 18 tornadoes so far today, and it, it's just begun. Some of them are from yesterday, but for Mississippi area, it's all like it's been Jackson, Mississippi, and north for the tornadoes, and it'd be Atlanta, Georgia, and east. For most of these tornadoes also one on the edge of virginia and one in illinois right above springfield plus i believe those from yesterday but we got one from colorado and two in nebraska i will put this link in the description that way you can check these out for yourself and zoom in and see where this is at now when i look at the velocity potential anomaly i do see that it's a very strong highest coloring of velocity and it will go all the way until may 5th with very strong potential. So this will be strong all the way into Wednesday. I'm also gonna put these links in the description a little bit separate than the normal National Weather Service alerts. I'm gonna put it as your day one, day two, and day three outlook. That way you can see what to look for because your categorical has grown. Your tornado threat has grown. Well, you got 5% stretching all the way over into Virginia now across North Carolina. That wasn't there earlier. We just had a little piece. This has grown greatly. A lot of this has grown. The winds have grown. Even the hail has grown to a bigger area now. For your day two, you can see how much bigger that the margarine has gotten. Now it's going way up into the New England states with the thunderstorms. And it's going well into uh, New York with the margarine. Now it was just right on the edge of New York and Pennsylvania. So it has grown. Plus your tornado risk has stretched out more of the 2% area for tomorrow. As well as the 5%, it has bulked down further to the south. And your wind threat for tomorrow has greatly grown. Your 5% is now spread all across, all the way until Delaware, Maryland, all across the east coast. And your 30% of, of damage and winds has grown to a bigger area for tomorrow. And the whole area will see hail as well. Uh, matter of fact, the slight risk has grown and a significant hail has stretched further out into the central U.S. Now, the only thing that stayed the same pretty much is day three. Uh, the thunderstorms has gone way up until Maine, into Ver Vermont and New Hampshire, but now the severe weather is still the same. It's showing right on the edge of New Jersey and, and uh, Long Island. And then the 5% chance for your severe weather is same place. It has not changed. That's the only thing that has not changed. So remember, these links will be in the descriptions below the timestamps. Remember, there are timestamps. Use them as you need them, please. And as we check real quick and see what's going on according to the euro hourly, 
and we see what the, the rain amount is from now until Wednesday. You can see the tracks. This is a 24-hour track, so you'll see it flood up, and you'll see it evaporate as the days go by. So you can see who's going to have heavy rain and where these tracks are going to go. And you can see clearly there's going to be a good track going across the Ohio Valley to the northeast, and there's going to be a good track that's going to go down Mississippi straight to the southeast. So here we are going through our day. The rain's starting to build up. It's going to get the tracks. Then as we get into tomorrow, then it's going to go to the northeast and the southeast. And all that's going to be heavy rainfall. It's going to be a lot of flooding all the way until Wednesday when it finally goes away. As well as your Cape values, you're just now quiet before the storm. Here we are, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's just starting to build up your storms. It's going to stay nice and intense until about 9, 10 o'clock at night. At that point, you're going to be dealing with still over four or 5,000 joules. But at overnight hours, you're definitely going to have nocturnal tornadoes going with this storm. It finally starts calming down about 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. And this is considered calm down. Actually, this is considered very severe weather. This is well over 2,500 joules. You can see that you have 3,000 to 3,500 in the red to the dark red. So you still have strong Cape values as you go from 5 a.m. into the early morning hours. Sun comes up tomorrow and boom, it's going to burst all over again for the deep south. And then it's going to go all the way till 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. It's going to calm back down again, which is still showing over 2,500 Cape values. And it will be strong enough to support severe storms and severe weather as you go through tomorrow night into the early morning hours. Then Wednesday morning, the sun comes back up. Boom, it warms back up again. You have another chance for severe weather along the southeast and the east coast before it goes back down around 8, 9 o'clock at night. 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock tonight. It starts brewing up really good. 8, 9, 10 o'clock. Now you got massive thunderstorms going from Texas to Louisiana to Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, just covered with a blow up of storms. Not to mention the blow up that's in Ohio Valley as well. Midnight, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Now it's going to move all over the Ohio Valley all night long. Then tomorrow morning, 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's going to start brewing up again and go to the southeast. 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the afternoon. Now you're empty of storms. Now here's your look from the central U.S. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock tonight. It's going to start brewing up along Illinois all the way down to Texas and Oklahoma. And you're going to get some for the southeast as well. 11, midnight, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Now you got a, a real nasty storm in Ohio Valley. And it's going to stay there all night long into the early morning hours. 10 o'clock in the morning, 11, noon time. Then it starts blowing up for Louisiana and Arkansas again. Still carrying storms over Tennessee as it goes over to the southeast tomorrow afternoon. 5 o'clock in the afternoon, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the afternoon. Still going on, still blowing up. 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow night, 11, midnight, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning before it finally leaves South Carolina, 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning before it leaves North Carolina. And here's your look for the southeast because y'all are getting storms as we speak. 2, 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is just a bad, nasty storm that's coming later tonight for Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma. It's going to be really nasty. And it's going to carry over all the way to the early morning hours. 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Now everything's cleared up until tomorrow morning when the heat comes back. 10, 11, noon time, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And here we go all over again, carrying all afternoon long, all night long with some serious storms. 11 o'clock at night, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning Wednesday, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning Wednesday, 5 there's going to be some nasty storms. And then after that goes off Wednesday, there's going to be some more firing up that's going to be happening in the southeast before it finally goes away. In the northeast, you do have storms. You do have some severe, but you do have rain coming today. Starting this afternoon, you're going to start getting some storms coming across Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania. It's at 9 o'clock tonight, 10, 11, 12 o'clock. It's going over Long Island, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Even Massachusetts will get this come tomorrow morning. Right around 7, 8 a.m., it's, go, go, it's going to go across eastern Massachusetts. Then it's going to build up again through the Ohio Valley. And by tomorrow evening, 5, 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, you got it coming by again for Delaware, uh, Maryland, southern New Jersey as it goes across. And there will be some portions that could hit 
uh, Connecticut and Long Island and northern New Jersey as the system leaves. This is our 60 hour run of total precipitation that will come out of this full run for the whole U.S. You have heavy amounts in northern Mississippi from central to northern Alabama, central to northern Georgia, central uh, South Carolina as well, as well as western Tennessee. There's lighter amounts for Texas, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, but northern Arkansas will be heavier, southern Missouri will be heavier, northeast Oklahoma, and a panhandle of Texas. But anywhere you see this pink and this red, this is anywhere from one and a half to two inches of rainfall, and it is just sporadic. If you see these lines, these each one of these is a cell that dropped a lot of rainfall. You can just see how it's just gonna be a bunch of shooting stars for the next couple of days of cells just passing through and just ripping across. Now, there will be some precipitation for the Midwest. There will be some for the Ohio Valley, lighter as you go more northern. Uh, also for Michigan, northern Michigan. And the northeast as well. You got northern Virginia that's going to be some, getting some good rainfall. Western Virginia. Pennsylvania is pretty much light, except for southwest Pennsylvania and eastern Pennsylvania. New Jersey from central to northern is going to be heavier, but central to southern will see some rain. Long Island, you can see two to three inches of rain. Connecticut, Rhode Island can see some rain. Even a little bit of rain for uh, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire. Very light amounts, but you can see some. As well as the temperatures, guys, don't don't forget. After you're dealing with all these storms, we still got these temperatures that's going to be moving in behind it. It's not going to be awfully bad. It's still going to be in the 40s, but it will be coming in today into tonight. It will put some colder temperatures in the Midwest, uh, like I said, the 40s. But some people like, like North Dakota, South Dakota, Northern Minnesota might see freezing conditions as well as the higher elevations of Wyoming, Colorado. And as you go through tomorrow, it's going to start warming back up again. It will not stay cold for long at all. And then the cold air is going to come in again tomorrow night. It's going to move on in. That's going to be the coldest and the furthest that it does reach. And right about in the morning, for Wednesday morning, this is your coldest temperatures. Still everybody in the 40s, high 30s, nothing really super to worry about. As it pulls away, but I'm still showing that Thursday also, it will be one more dip of somewhat cold air. That will be affecting the Midwest and the Northeast a little bit. But once again, you're going to be in your 40s. But with the wind chill, it will make a little bit of difference. So with the wind chill factor, these are going to be your temperatures for tonight until tomorrow morning. And then the wind chill for tomorrow night into Wednesday morning, this is going to be what it feels like. Your temperatures are going to be in the 40s, but it's going to feel like it's in the 30s for some people. And then when it shifts over to the northeast for Thursday, you're still going to be in the 40s temperatures. But with the wind chills, you could feel like you're in your upper 30s. For the northeast and i did check we're on a going on a positive trend on the arctic oscillation it will be going directly up but as soon as we get around may 18th may 19th there is another possibility that this is not going to end but from national weather service you can see that we are below average temperatures for the next six to ten days in all this blue you are above average for the next six to ten days in all this red so it won't reach far south to the southeast with these cold temperatures. It is going to be only in the 40s, but even still in the south, 40s can be somewhat cold, but it won't reach you. And while the precipitation for the next 6 to 10 days is above average in all this green, you can see it's below average, especially for down here in the southeast, but the west coast is going to be seeing a drought. As a matter of fact, I'm showing that all this below average temperatures for Washington, Oregon, uh, California, Nevada, will carry into Arizona and New Mexico as well as you go into the 8 to 14 day. It don't, it's not as strong for the West Coast, but still you're still below average, and it will carry on into the, the Southwest with some below average rainfall precipitation all the way up from 8 to 14 days away. And there's a quick update, guys. Here's your NAM 3K so you can see what the storms is going to do. So far, I've noticed they have shifted a little further to the east southeast especially with the rainfall amounts so god bless all of you i hope you will be safe through these storms into tonight and for the ones tomorrow tomorrow looks like it is going to be worse whether you can believe that or not so thank you again i do appreciate y'all for watching the video i promise y'all do an update and i am a man of my word it's not a whole bunch going on different but there has been some updates so hopefully you know what to expect now now i'm about to be off of bed so i can do my video in the morning for you i hope you have a blessed day tonight Hope if you lost power and you're just now seeing this video, I hope you keep your power and it don't happen again. Bless you all. Charge your laptops. You can charge your phones off of your laptops. So charge your laptops in case you lose power. You have a backup 
uh, battery source to charge your phones. But let's praise God, guys, because in every time we always need God, especially in our darkest hour. And this is some pretty dark hours that we're going through, especially for all of you. So God bless you. Psalm 42. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan, and of the Hermonites from the hill Mazar. Deep calleth un unto me at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. God bless you all. I appreciate you all for helping get the alert out today on the video. Thank you so much. Leave a like if you have time. I appreciate it. I hope you're safe tonight. All glory. Does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. God bless you all.